Amen. Good morning, everybody. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. And it's good to be here with you. If you are visiting with us or if you are on uh, uh, Facebook or YouTube, which we are on Facebook now, it's a joy to be able to just uh, worship the Lord with you. And if you're here with us physically, I just want to invite your attention to our bulletin. We have inside an insert, which is a welcome um, uh, section. And if you would fill that out so that we could have a record of your visit, We'd appreciate that, but on the back, we also have a prayer request side, and if you would fill that out, um, uh, if you have a prayer request, I'll be glad to pray for you this week. Whatever it may be, we all need prayer, so you fill that out and just put it in the um, uh, entryway in the basket, and um, I'll be praying for you. Well, if you take a look at the announcements, we... Uh, uh, have some youth activities coming up on August the 19th. Brother Mason is going to take the youth to Urban Brown, and uh, you got all the information there about when to meet and uh, uh, what all is going to um, uh, occur. Looks like it's going to be a full day of stuff, so uh, if you have any particular questions, just ask uh, Brother Mason, and uh, he'll be glad to, to answer them. And if you can help him out, I'm sure he would not uh, turn you down. So just be in prayer for that. Also, folks, take a look at our um, uh, mower fund. Uh, the goal is 5000 but look at what we've got so far. $4,577, so we're just a little under $500 uh, uh, to uh, meet that uh, goal. So um, let's go ahead and push and get the rest of it in, and uh, we can be mowing in style this uh, uh, rest of this summer. So be in prayer for that, and um, again, I just want to thank all of those who are keeping our building and grounds uh, up to uh, uh, up to date and neat and clean and um, attractive for people to uh, be able to drive by and see or even when they come in here um, see a nice place um, uh, to be able to worship and also uh, OCC we are collecting uh, boys t-shirts correct all right. we'll get them August the 16th. okay Okay, so if you didn't hear that, we're collecting school supplies for August, and the notebooks need to be flexible or pliable enough so that they can uh, put it in the shoebox. So if you can uh, help with that uh, and continue to support that ministry, we would appreciate it. Well, um, we're going to have this afternoon, uh, fifth Sunday, and I'm going to let Brother Stephen talk about that. But uh, as far as announcements go, I think that's uh, all we have. Uh, but we have Brother Sonny Hubbard, who is our Deacon of the Week. So, Brother Sonny, would you come down and uh, start us off the right way this morning in prayer? We're going to have a good day in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hold on just a second, Brother Sonny. Let's pray. Father God, we come to your throne of grace this morning, thanking you for the privilege of assembling ourselves in your house to study your word, to offer up our prayer possessions, Father, to those in need. Father, as we remember the activities coming up for the present week, for those that are going on vacation before school starts, and those that are out on vacation traveling now, Father, give them traveling mercies to and from their destinations. Keep them healthy and safe in that environment. Father, again, be with us. As fellow believers, we lift each other up. Father, as we go about our activities for the coming week, and Father, help us in our thoughts, actions, and most of all, Heavenly Father, in our words that we will represent you to those that come in contact with this week. And we ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Good, good morning, everybody. Let's take, <laughs> let's take out our hymn books and turn over hymn number four for our 
welcome him to God be the glory. We're going to sing all three stanzas. Let's stand together and greet each other. Hymn number four. <clears throat> to God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin. And open the life gates that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. So oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he hath done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. So oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing. Is the sun, but purer and higher and greater will be our victory, our victory when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Turn back in your hymn books to hymn number three, Worthy of Worship, we'll sing all three stanzas. Worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all the glad songs we can sing. Worthy of all of the offerings we bring, you are worthy. Father, creator, you are worthy. Savior, sustainer, you are worthy. Worthy and wonderful. Worship and praise, worthy of reverence, worthy of fear, worthy of love and devotion, worthy of 
kings and redeemer, wonderful counselor, comforter, friend, savior and source of our life without him. You are worthy, Father, creator, you are worthy. Savior, sustainer, you are worthy, worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and praise. And look back to hymn number two, holy, 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 we'll sing all four stanzas. <clears throat>
got sidetracked and didn't tell everybody about Fifth Sunday Sing tonight. Tonight, our service starts at 5 o'clock, not 6 o'clock, so there will not be discipleship training. We'll all meet in here for a time of worship and celebration. Uh, we have uh, a few people that have signed up to share, but there's still plenty of spots available for anyone that would like to come and uh, present whatever you, you feel worthy of worship. And that doesn't have to be a song. Uh, in the past, we've had people share testimony, scripture, poems. Um, so don't be confused that, oh, if I don't have musical talent or anything of that nature, I can't share this evening. This is, you know, uh, just speak with me either after the service or beforehand tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll figure out how we can fit you into our, our service. And then afterwards, we're going to meet in the CERC for a church potluck. And this is going to be a wonderful time that we can sit and fellowship and visit and uh, something we haven't got to enjoy for a while. And I think it's going to be a wonderful time of fellowship tonight. And I've been looking forward to it since we as a deacon body decided uh, a couple weeks back to bring our fifth Sunday celebration back to the church. So make sure you come tonight and bring a, a, a potluck, uh, you know, an item, whatever that may be. Um, I, I told the choir I'm bringing cheeseburgers from McDonald's. So that's what uh, Bryant Luke and I are bringing. No, nah, I'm just kidding. It'll probably just be french fries. But we'll do that. And... Um, We'll just have a great time. I'm so looking forward to tonight and hope to see all of y'all there. That's right. You can bring uh, friends and family. And or drag your neighbor or, you know, just whatever.
this about. Thank you, God. You know what that called over here? It's prophet witness. Prophecy. And I've got a picture of some things that we thank God for. And I want you to tell me what they are. Okay? I've got pictures and I want you to tell me what they are. And all of these things are things that we thank God for. Okay? You ready? Jack, you could have gotten two and saved me one. <laughs> anyway, take your Bibles and turn with me this morning to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31, and the title of my message this morning, Has Anyone Told You Today That Jesus Loves You? Now, you probably have heard that question voiced before in this church. Some of you may know a man named Ray Dietrich. Ray passed on this, uh, this past Wednesday. He was a dear friend of our church. He wasn't a visitor. But whenever his church didn't meet, Ray would come to our church. And I've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Ray after our Wednesday night service because that's when he would usually come. And usually he would show up during a business meeting. We got so accustomed to him coming that we timed our business meetings whenever he would show up. The first time I met Ray, he walked in on a Wednesday night. Uh, he had a limp. He was stooped over uh, an older man. He wasn't very, very old. I would imagine he was probably in his mid-60s or somewhere around there. Uh, but he was just plain. Uh, but that didn't uh, uh, stand out. Uh, about Ray the first time that I met Ray. What stood out about Ray when I first met him was that he didn't introduce himself. Hey, I'm Ray Dietrich. Uh, uh, you must be the pastor or this, that, and the other. The first thing that came out of Ray's mouth was a question. 
And he looked at me and with a big old smile and said, has anyone told you today that Jesus loved you? And folks, I tell you, that took me, that took me by surprise. And it was by God's timing that he came into my life. Um, I was dealing, I believe, with something that, was, uh, that I was struggling with. I was dealing with the loss of a dear church member and um, uh, was down. And um, uh, Cindy and I had spent time talking about it and so forth. And just to hear that uh, question uh, lifted my heart, but it shocked me. Now, Ray, again, was no theologian. He was no scholar. I remember every time he came into the sanctuary, he had the same old shirt on. It was a long sleeve shirt, and uh, he had patches on it. And one of the patches I can remember uh, over his um, heart was Jesus. And he had other patches and all of that. He had no uh, reservations whatsoever about witnessing. Uh, this man loved the Lord. And he made such an impact on me. I can tell you, folks, just that one question touched me more than I think any sermon that I've ever preached. Now, Ray's gone on to be with the Lord today. And I'm not preaching a funeral. But the question that he asked... It's something that we all need to consider and we need to be rest assured of. Does Jesus love you today? And has anybody told you that? Well, I can tell you by the authority of God's word, he does. So let's consider that question this morning in light of scripture. Let's stand in honor and reverence of God's holy, inspired, infallible word. In Jeremiah 31, 3, we read, the Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, bless the reading of your word. And Father, this morning, Lord, we're here to thank you for Ray. But Lord, we're not here to honor him. We're here to honor you. And we're here, Father, to uh, draw illumination. And uh, Father, I thank you for the blessing that he uh, was to each and every one of us. But I thank you even more of this pivotal question that um, we need to be assured of that, yes, Jesus loves me. So, Father, today, as we uh, consider your word, Father, I pray if there's anyone here today who doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. Now, Father, today will be the day where that transformation will take place. So, Father, for that to happen, Lord, you know what you have to do. You have to remove me. Father, I'm nothing more than a vessel, broken as I am. Uh, but, Father, I pray that you increase and I decrease and that the name of Jesus be magnified in this place today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let me ask you something. How many people are suffering this morning? You know, sin and suffering go hand in hand. In fact, suffering is the result of sin from which no one can escape. Each and every one of us suffers with something. The Bible talks about some of the most horrendous sufferings that has existed uh, throughout history. I can't help but think of Job and the suffering that he had to endure, the physical suffering, the emotional suffering, the financial suffering, uh, the mental suffering. Everything that Job went through was horrible. And when Job suffered, I think it was more than just a natural suffering. I think because Satan had his hand directly in it, it was a supernatural suffering. So we probably won't even begin to comprehend the extent of suffering that Job went through. When I think about the writer of Hebrews and what the writer of Hebrews had to say about all of those saints who suffered, whose names didn't make it in the uh, Bible, but yet they are still held dear to the Lord. I think about suffering. And you may say, well, Brother Tom, that's well and good. You know, Job suffered and uh, the saints suffered. But what about my suffering today? Well, what about your suffering today? What are you suffering with today? What is it that is burdening you? What is it that is uh, bringing you uh, to desperation maybe? Is it physical? Is it emotional? Uh, is it mental? Uh, you know, the Lord has a, uh, a word for us. And for those of you who are suffering this morning, has anyone told you that Jesus loves you? You see, Jesus is no stranger to suffering. 
Listen to some passages that may bring some of you who are suffering some comfort. In 1 Peter 2.23, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Paul declares in 2 Corinthians 1.5, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Church, I can tell you, Jesus knows all about suffering. And Jesus has the answer to suffering. You know, we seek the help and the assistance of those around us on this earth. But church, I'm going to tell you something. The only one who can bring us true consolation for the suffering that we go through each and every day is Jesus Christ. The one who suffered ultimately for no reason at all, who didn't deserve it at all, but yet because he loved us, he suffered and died. Who better to find our peace than through Jesus Christ? Are you suffering this morning? Well, let me tell you something. Jesus loves you. Are you hurting this morning? You know, I heard a person say, and I believe I've mentioned it in a sermon uh, previously, when someone tells you they're okay, chances are they're not okay. I don't know of a person, you may be here this morning. Your heart may be breaking. You may be hurting. And the thing about it is, most people won't even know. But I can tell you, Jesus knows. I don't know if there's a person here who hasn't been hurt because of circumstances because of people, because of events, because of things. Maybe you were hurt and you just want someone to hear you, but you don't know who to talk to. David was a man who hurt. David was a man who suffered through imaginable pain and hurt. In Psalm 31.10 David declared, for my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity, and my bones waste away. I am a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and am repulsive to my acquaintances. Those who see me outside flee from me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mine. I am like a broken vessel. How many are broken this morning? Because of hurt. Because of pain that you're dealing with. How many feel like David this morning? You may believe the lie that nobody cares. You may believe the lie this morning that no one can understand you. Well, church, I'm going to tell you something. There may not be one person on this earth who can understand what you're going through. There may not be that one person who's reached out in caring and in love and tried to comfort you and bring peace to you. But let me ask you something. Has anybody told you today that Jesus loves you? In Isaiah 53, 4, the word of God declares, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. There may be nothing that this preacher can say this morning that's going to ease the heart, hurt that your heart is suffering through right now. But I can tell you there's one 
whose healing hand can be upon you, who can bring you the peace. He may not remove the storm in your life, but I can tell you, He's going to guide you through it. And if all things work together for the good, for those who love Him, I can tell you right now that your hurt is not in vain. Your suffering, your hurt is for a purpose. You may not find meaning in it right now. You may not be able to find the answer to it right now. But I can tell you what you're going through right now is a witness to someone else who may be going through that themselves or may go through it down the line who's going to need you to have gone through this so that you can tell them this is what happened to me and this is how our God got me through it. Let me tell you that Jesus loves you today. Are you lonely this morning? One of the worst feelings in the world is to feel like you're by yourself. And it can make no difference if you have hundreds of people around you. There are people who are surrounded by others, but yet they feel like they're an island, that they're isolated. Even the secular world will tell you today that one of the greatest needs of man is to love and to be loved and to be denied that in this world today or at any time is something that is very tragic. It is very hard to get through life with, just to be heard, just to have the touch of a hand, just to have someone to talk to. Church, we were made to commune, to fellowship with each other. Why do you think the Bible puts so much emphasis on church unity, church love, and how we're to treat each other? There's nothing worse than for a Christian to feel alone because a Christian should never feel that way. But let me ask you this morning, for those of you who feel lonely, has anybody told you today that Jesus loves you? I had to learn a very, very painful lesson. On August the 9th, my wife will have been dead two years. Many of you know that pain. And I can tell you that the journey I had to walk and still walk at times is one that only the Lord and I can take. Now, for those of you who are suffering, for those of you who are hurting, for those of you who feel lonely, I just want you to know there are times in our lives and there are circumstances and events in our lives that Jesus will allow to happen so that you and him and you and him alone will only be able to take. He doesn't want the distractions of others. He doesn't want you running to others. He wants that time with you to give you what no one else can give you. And that's peace. And that's assurance. Guidance. And comfort. And sometimes God will get you alone on those paths just to walk down with you so that it's only you and him, so that it is only he that you will listen to and depend on. And I can tell you right now, if no one has told you today that Jesus loves you, he does. And Jesus knows all about loneliness. In Matthew 26, verse 36, one of my favorite scriptures that I've preached from time and time again, is when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And if you remember the story, 
Jesus took 11 of the disciples. One, Judas, had already left their company going to betray him. They get to the garden. Jesus leaves eight of them there at the outer edge of the garden. And he goes a little farther with Peter, James, and John. Little by little, Jesus is surrendering those that he had grown so close to over the past three years. But Jesus knew there were some journeys that he was going to have to take. And to take it, he was going to have to release his dependence upon everybody else and everything else. He went a little farther, and then there came the point when he had to release, let go of Peter, James, and John. And he said, please just sit here and pray for me. And then the Bible records, Jesus went a little farther by himself. This is the moment of solitude where it's just Jesus and his father. And Jesus, knowing that he was going to have to take on the guilt, my guilt, your guilt, was brought to so much desperation and pain that sweat drops of blood started to pour out from his forehead. And then seeking the support of his friends, he went back, and what were they doing? They were asleep. He woke them up. He said, couldn't you just stay awake for just a few moments and pray for me? Folks, that's being isolated. That's being singled out. That's being alone. But what did Jesus do? He went back to that place where it was just him and his father. And he carried on his prayer and his plea. Church, Jesus knows what it means to suffer. Jesus knows what it means to hurt. Jesus knows what it means to be alone. One of the songs that we sing, one of the hymns that I believe bears mentioning when we think about all of this, are you weary, are you burdened, are you afraid at the thought of dying? Are you just burdened down with all the cares of the world? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. You've no other friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you discouraged this morning? One of the greatest weapons, church, in the devil's arsenal is discouragement. Discouragement will cripple you. Discouragement will have you defeated in this world. Discouragement will have you so debilitated that you don't think you can do anything. In the military, we had a term for people like that. They were called the walking wounded. They could breathe. They could function barely, but they were no good in the fight. Many today are walking wounded because they are discouraged. And what brings on discouragement? Well, guilt does, for one thing. The things that the devil wants to bring up in the past, the things that are like a shackle that are holding you in place that prevent you from moving on. You know, there's a difference between guilt and conviction. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes to every believer who is saved who has the Holy Spirit in them. And when you do wrong, the Holy Spirit will convict you and will not give you peace until it's reconciled. And the cure for conviction is repentance. And once you have repented, then there's restoration. Guilt comes from the devil. It is a burden. It is a weight that people carry around that they will not get rid of. Jesus didn't come for you to be guilt-ridden. He's come to give you freedom. He's come to set you apart from all of that. He bore your guilt, church, so that you wouldn't have to. 
Don't let the devil think that what you've done in the past is insurmountable. That's what's going to keep you down. Listen, our God is not a God of the past. You can't change the past. You can't do one single thing about the past, but you can do something about the here and now. And that's by trusting in him and following him. Some of you here are discouraged because of failures in your life. Some of you have blown it. Some of you think, I've done no good. I've never amounted to anything. I have failed. I want to tell you something, church. That's a lie from hell. A believer, the way I see it, never fails. God has just revealed to you things that won't work in your life. But that doesn't mean there's not opportunities to change all of that and do what is right. For those of you who are discouraged today, has anyone told you that Jesus loves you? Romans 8, 1 declares, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Church, Jesus came to set you free. He didn't come to clean up your jail cell. He came to free you from it. And then finally, are you lost today? How many of you today are desperate? How many of you today, even though you might have come to church all your life, even though you might have read your Bible, even though you have done all the things that a good religious person or Baptist or church member does, how many of you have really surrendered your life to the authority of Jesus Christ in obedience? How many have truly repented of your sins? And decided to follow Jesus no matter what. If you're lost today, has anyone told you that Jesus loves you? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrate his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Church, are you suffering? Are you hurting? Are you lonely? Are you discouraged? Are you lost? And that just doesn't apply to those who are here in this building. If you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, the very Jesus who loves us in this sanctuary loves you right now. It makes no difference what you may have gone through, what you're going through now. I'm here to tell you, as Brother Ray would have told you, has anybody told you today that Jesus loves you? If not, well, I can tell you, he does. You may not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. All you need to do today is just admit that you're a sinner. Confess your sins. Come before the Lord clean and say, Lord, I've blown it. Lord, I've done the religion thing. I've gone to church. I've done this, that, and the other. And I've gone out into the world. I've tried that. But, Lord, there's just no peace inside me right now. There's only uncertainty and doubt. Listen, the, the Lord didn't put that in you. That comes from the devil. But once you've admitted you're, just, you're a sinner, you repent of your sins, which means that I'm turning the other way. I'm going the way of the Lord. No matter what may happen, I have decided to follow Jesus. Trusting in him every day. And my friend, you'll experience the love that Jesus has for each and every one of us. And it's going to prompt you to ask that question to everybody else that you meet. Has anybody told you that Jesus loves you today? Let's stand and have a closing word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love that came down to man. And Father, there's not a person on this earth right now who isn't seeking answers, who's seeking consolation, who's seeking solace, who's seeking comfort, who's seeking something. 
Father, I pray today that everyone in this congregation knows that we're not going to find our answer in the world. We're only going to find it in you. So, Lord, I pray as this invitation is given that you free our hearts and our minds from all the things that are cluttering us, that are hurting us, that are weighing us down, and that, Father, we just surrender all to you today, and we give you the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You come. Hymn 294. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still, have thine own Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day in the Lord. Come on back again at 5 o'clock for our... Um, uh, fifth Sunday singing and stay for the uh, potluck at six. And until then, you tell someone about Jesus. They need to know him. Brother Stephen, yeah. would you close us? Bow your heads with me. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, Lord, I do thank you that uh, your son showed his love not only through the message that he spoke and preached, but through his actions by going to the cross and taking our sin and laying it there and taking the punishment for that but not only that, overcoming the death, and as he promised, going to prepare a place for us with you. And Lord, that's so comforting. That's, that's just the perfect way to show that you love us. And I just thank you for that, Father. Lord, I do pray for this church. I pray for our, uh, our, those that are suffering right now. I pray for those that are uh, just dealing with things. And I just pray that your Holy Spirit will enter their lives and give them discernment, comfort, understanding, and strength, Lord. We just ask all these things in Jesus' name.